So this should be a pretty quick video. It's mostly just for me when I forget what I have to undo on my board, but maybe it'll help out anyone else who made the same mistake as me. Uh, so I bought the Raspberry Pi Compute Module 3, the non-light version, uh, just because it has the onboard 4 gig of uh, flash memory, but I didn't realize this meant you can't use the external SD card interface. So essentially this video is gonna show how you can turn your non-light version of the Compute Module into the light version by bypassing the flash and exposing the uh, SD card interface. It's pretty straightforward for the most part, it's just depopulating a couple of resistors and then shorting some no stuff resistor pads. I've got the schematic open over here uh, and this is just the sheet that has the flash memory interface. Uh, so this is the is one of the IO banks on the processor uh, which handles the uh, flash interface. And you can see these signals go over to uh, the four gig of flash which is present on the non-light version of the compute module uh, on the light version, this chip just isn't there. And those signals also come over to here, uh, which go through the zero ohm jumper resistors to what is the uh, external SD card interface. So on the uh, non-light version, this is here, and these resistors are not populated. And then on the light version, uh, this chip is not populated along with these supporting components, but these resistors are. Uh, and the reason for that is just so that if both are ever connected at the same time, uh, they don't interfere with each other. A couple other things are um, these two resistors, R9 and R10, set the I.O. voltage level for this uh, I.O. bank. And on the non-light version, R10 is, uh, is populated, but R9 is not. That just hard sets the I.O. voltage to 1.8 volts, but on the uh, light version of the CM3, uh, it's connected to this uh, I.O. reference voltage. I believe that's also 1.8 volts, but uh, you can set it there just so that if it does change, it's, it's there. Uh, let's see, one last thing is R13 sets the reset state of the flash memory. So rather than actually pulling off this chip uh, in this video, what we'll do is just connect uh, R13 to ground so that this chip is held in reset. Uh, what that'll do is, uh, I'm assuming, put all these uh, uh, IO pins into a high impedance mode so that they don't interfere when we connect an SD card. Uh, hopefully that allows us to reverse this in the future without having to like remove this and then put it back on. Okay, so actually going over to what's involved, I've annotated a quick picture of the front and back side of the board so you can see. Uh, over here, R9 and R10 uh, need to be swapped. So that's the IO voltage level here. What you'll need to do is uh, short these two pads, which is what would be R9 and then remove R10. Uh, over here, you have to short R12, 16, 17, 18, and 19. And then also on this side of the board is um, this reset pin resistor, R13. Uh, rather than have it connected to uh, 1.8 volts here, uh, you'll have to take this resistor off and then connect one side to ground. And you can see uh, over here later how that's done. On the back side of the board, there's only uh, one thing that has to be changed, and that's the R24 slash 25 setting. And that's for the clock on the flash memory interface. So you'll have to just remove this resistor and then put a jumper across these two pads. Uh, okay, so I've actually already done this uh, modification. So I'm just gonna show you what it looks like at the end. So this is what I was talking about with R13. Uh, rather than having it uh, populated this way, just removed it and then rotated 90 degrees so that the reset pin side is still connected, but then on the other side, it's connected over to ground. Uh, you can connect it over to any other ground connection like this cap or this cap, but this one just seemed closer. And then here are 12, 16, 17, 18, 19. Also our nine are all just uh, sh like solder shorted over. Uh, you could just use a piece of jumper wire if you can't get uh, a solder blob to work, but I found this works a little bit nicer. I think that's it for this side. Um, yeah, so going back to this mod, uh, essentially you just want to remove this resistor and then populate, or rather uh, solder jump this resistor. And one thing to note is because I'm hopefully going to uh, undo this modification later, rather than actually pulling this resistor off completely, um, it's a little bit nicer to just leave it hanging on one pad so that uh, you can quickly swap it over later. So yeah, that's about it. Um, I've already tested this and it seems to work fine. 
Uh, I've put an SD card in, it seems to boot up no problem, and it's not interfering with the onboard flash. So hopefully that helps for anyone else that made the same mistake as me.